not be surprised by now you know i'm all i'm a, I'm a kitty wife right yes okay today we are going deep down to the village you know what my brother-in-law came or let me call him my father-in-law my husband's uncle he came from the village so if you see this you will know that his village is but first of all let us travel to china and walk the temple of heaven and while we are doing that i'll be plucking the leaves of this warrior walk leaves yes it's what we are making today all the way from a kitty cutsy my father-in-law quickly go call your friends family loved ones and of course neighbors foodies and fight is about to start the concept of a god who oversees the universe is universal and the chinese are not left out we are still in beijing and after a beautiful meal with mr chang and his wife we have decided to go see the temple of heaven so we are at the entrance of the temple of heaven we are yeah. enter the park area the Here park not area only the temple of heaven at the same time it is also a park so okay. now we are in the park area okay. um, this is the park area yeah. you can see those kind of equipment the far away that's the Temple of Heaven is a big asset of religious buildings, which was visited by emperors of the Ming and Qing dynasties for ceremonies of prayer to heaven. So we have arrived at the Temple of Heaven. Yes. Yeah. yeah. When you see this building, most of people take this place as the real Temple of Heaven. Okay. It was a place for emperor uh, to work, to pray for good pray. Hands. Okay. Yeah. So, so this is the whole. What do you mean by saying it's not the real? Temple. Is there a real one? Actually, the whole area is called the Temple of Heaven. The whole area, not is only this building. Not only this building. Because this building is too pretty. It's too unique. Yeah. Yeah. So a lot of people took this place as, as uh, a temple. <laughs> yeah, representative oh, of oh. the Temple of Heaven. Well, you said this Temple of Heaven was used for what? For emperor to worship God of Heaven. Okay. Uh, to worship more rainfall and worship uh, the bumper harvest. Okay. So the emperor worship here. Um, worshiped the God of heaven here and he worshiped him for rainfall and worshiped him for bumper harvest. Bumper harvest and okay. for worship the emperor's ancestors for okay. protect emperor. Okay, so he also worshiped his ancestors here for protection. Yes. The temple was built from 1406 to 1420 by Emperor Zudi, the same emperor responsible for the building of the forbidden city. My tour guide told me that during his annual sacrifice and prayers, he goes into a fast of no meat and stays away from women. Emperor comes two or three times. He comes two or three year. times every year. A year before emperor came here, he also need to fast it for three days. Oh, okay, so two days in Forbidden City, one day here. Okay. So both in Forbidden City and here, yeah. we got uh, abstinence hall. Abstinence hall. Abstinence hall. Abstinence okay. Hall. And if I understand you, you're saying um, before the emperor comes to worship, he will fast for three days. Yes. You earlier told me he wouldn't come near his wives. No wife. Uh, no ladies. No, lady. no alcohol. No, no alcohol. Meat. No, no garlic. No onion. Okay. No women. No alcohol. No garlic. No, no onion garlic. and no meat. Yeah. But he can eat rice. Show respect. He can eat rice? He can eat rice. He okay. can eat vegetable. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But no... So that's not like a complete fast. <laughs> yeah. He still eats. Yeah. Oh, okay. He still eats. In ancient China, the emperor was regarded as the son of heaven who represents heaven on earthly matters. So twice or three times a year, the emperor and his entourage will proceed to the temple from the forbidden city and no ordinary Chinese is allowed to see this procession or the ceremonies. The emperor, he was uh, considered as uh, the son of God of heaven. Okay. Anything related 
controlled by God of Heaven. So Anthony needs to come here to make a wish for this year have a bumper harvest. harvest. This ceremony is taken very seriously and there must not be any mistake, else it is seen as a bad omen and may affect rainfall and good harvest. There are three major complexes in the temple. The hall of prayer for good harvest, the building is completely wooden with no nails. This okay. building is the building, uh, no nails, no steel, no concrete, no nails, made of wood, supported by 28 wood pillars, okay. scattered in three rings. The inner ring got four pillars, and the outer second ring 12 pillars, okay. and third ring another 12 pillars. 12 pillars. So the central four pillars represent the four seasons of the year. Okay. And another second layer of 12 pillars represent 12 months of a year. Of the year. Okay. And the third layer of 12 pillars, this means there's the outer one, is represent the 12th division of a day. So it's, it's a wooden house too. All wood. wood all no wood. nails. No nails. No steel. No, no steel. concrete. Made by a large number of less brackets, tendon joints, or wood. If you follow Foodies and Spice, you will remember we have seen a building like this in Sheki, Azerbaijan. You can watch it on my YouTube channel. There is also the Imperial Vault of Heaven, which is smaller than the Hall of Prayer for Good Harvest. Then, the Secular Mound Altar is the altar proper. The center of the altar is a round slate called the Heart of Heaven or the supreme yang. Here, the emperor prayed for favorable weather. Well, like I said, the concept of God is universal. And here again in China, I have visualized what ancient China think about God and food. Also today, the temple of heaven is mostly used as a park for recreational activities. And as we walked by, we saw a lot of people having fun resting and relaxing it is time for dinner and our tour guide is taking us for a feast of chinese food the table is set and this rotating table is called lazy suzy on it most things are not recognizable others are but i tasted everything including this platter of chinese desserts the pea cake is said to be Empress Dowager's favorite. It was nice. For the donkey rolls, I couldn't take a second bite. It did not align with my taste palate. In all, I enjoyed dinner and was ready for the next adventure. Alright guys, so I'm trying to keep my chopstick game strong. Um, not too easy for first timers, but when you keep practicing, you'll get better at it. Mm. So, the chopsticks, when I first came here, they told me it's quite good for your brain. Um, it kind of exercises your brain if you use chopsticks. So, who doesn't need a brain exercise once in a while? But what I'm eating is stir fry noodle, also known as chow mein. Yeah. And um, this chow mein contains fried eggs, vegetables like carrots, um, spring roll, and uh, I'm not sure of what this is. What's this? Mushroom? Uh, mushroom yeah. yeah, it's actually called fungi. Yes. Oh, yeah. Yes. So, and um, mushroom is fungi. So, I think it's some kind of um, mushroom. So, this is very good. And of course, cooked with deep, dark soy sauce. Yeah. Mm. If I imagine how healthy my brain is right now. Anyway, we've been eating on rotating tables since we came. So many things. I just wondered that this is cornbread. This is um, chicken cooked in with some vegetables. This is braised pork. This is um, stewed meat. This seems like cabbage. Those are shrimps. Like you've got a little of everything. That's how the Chinese eat. Um, that's this cucumber is actually very beautiful and the fried eggs here so they eat a little of everything they order in bulk and they begin to eat it bit by bit so I think after two or three more spoons of this ramen noodle I'll start digging into the other things foodies and spice amazing China is powered by Beijing Wanziang travels welcome back 
China was so much fun. Yes, lots of fun and the food we kept eating on rotating tables. Yeah, and one thing I realized in China is that they eat quite a lot of exotic vegetables, some vegetables I don't know. So today on the show, from all the way in Ekiti, my Ekiti people, we have borrowa leaves, we also have snails, we have dry fish, we have bush meat, we have um, bell pepper, tatashi, onions, red peppers, cut bonnet, we have iru, all the way from Ekiti. We have palm oil, we have salt and seasoning cubes. <laughs> So the next thing I would do now is to blend the onions and the peppers. Onions quite important for me in soups. I'll just use um, a food processor for this onion and peppers. Now the food processor now will give me that chaka 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 ness. Yeah, yeah. Let me see the pepper don't go too blend, it don't go too smooth. So I'll just add it now. My tatashe, I already removed the seed from the tatashe and my pepper. If I need more pepper, I will just add Cameroon pepper. All right, I just added um, palm oil. Um, you just allow it to heat up a bit, but not bleach and I'll add the pepper and onions. Now, the Akiti people love iru a lot. That's the locust beans, yeah. And they usually get to fry them first before they start putting everything that they are cooking. So let me just do that village style. I have plenty iru so I can afford to eat plenty. Okay. So I'll cover it and give it some time to just cook a bit. The bush meat has been cleaned, so I'll just pieces it. Okay, I'll stir this now. And there's something that we've been forgetting to talk about since. That is prawns, fat prawns, crayfish. It's quite needed in this soup. Yeah, but if you don't have it, there's dry fish already. That's still nice. So I'll put the snail. Because I need it to cook. The fat prawns goes in. So I'll add some little water to allow that snail cook a bit. Cooking spoon of water to allow the snail cook. Now the reason why I'm very weary about the water, I'm putting it bit by bit, is because the warawa leaves, yeah, this leaf, um, it brings out a lot of water. Once I put it for soup, so plenty of water will come out. That's why some people also call it bologi leaves or water leaves. This is not the regular bologi leaf we have in Nigeria. But once that I put up um, Warawa on my Instagram, someone said in Sierra Leone or Liberia, they call it bologi. So we don't know the English name yet. So if you know I'm a beg, may not let us know. If you know the English name of this leaf, look at it very well. Yeah, let us know. But it's called Warawa here in the western part of Nigeria. Yeah. Some other people call it Roro War. Yeah, I guess the Ondo people call it Roro War. The Ekiti people call it Woro War. So that's why I'm not adding so much water to cook the snail. And so this is good. Okay, so the next thing I'll do now is to slice this vegetable. Now, this is another very good way of making sure you don't have so much um, water in your soup. Yes, you wash like this, you put it in your colander, allow it drain. So that way you are not going to be having so much water in the soup.
and anytime my father-in-law is coming or anybody's coming from Ekiti or Babai Beji travels, they always bring it. They always bring it. I'll check on that sauce now. This is good. Okay, so I told you I'm not actually breaking this fish. So, but if it breaks as we go, it's luck. I would like to serve it whole to Pavai Beji. I'm not sure I've added salt to this thing at all. So a little salt just to help everything cook. I cook. Someone had actually seen this live in my house once and claimed that in their own part of the country, she's from Aquaibom, that it's weed. They don't eat it, it grows around their house that it's weed. So I don't know, just in case you think it's weed too. Man, Ekiti people, is their delicacy. <laughs> in case it's weed in your village. Okay, just try it out. And I love it too, I love the taste. I like the way it just goes easy with swallow. Ekiti people, their own is pounded yam, but me, I'm making semovita. Today all of you know I love semovita. And another swallow I love these days is rice flour. Yeah. Bush meat has already been smoked. So I have my snail, I have my dried fish, I have my bush meat now going in. And I also have crayfish, the fat prawns. So I just tear, and the next thing I'll be adding now is the warro -war leaves. I told you this leaf brings out its own water. So that's why I've made sure that the sauce is really dried. Now, somebody on my YouTube page, yeah, once told me that one trick to making sure that your vegetable stays green is that after putting it in your pot, you don't cover it. So I want to try that style today and see if it really works. <laughs> So I'll add two seasoning cubes. <music> All right, for the holic, so first thing first, I want to read your message first. So I have Paul Idowu on the watermelon sorbet episode, and he said, great job on the China trip. I'm personally going to learn from this China series. God is taking you places. Thank you so much, Paul. Merci Olokpa said, thank you, Auntie Gina. It was really an amazing trip, I must confess. And the China dress looks good on you. May God bless your family in Jesus' name. The ice cream looks yummy. I'll give it a try here. Yeah, the watermelon sorbet was a hit. A lot of people have tried it already and they started sending me messages. All right, so Tammy Baby says, I will sure try the watermelon sorbet. Easy recipe. Thank you, Mama Ibeji. Courage and blessing. I love your cooking and I've learned a lot all those well so so amazing i would love to be part of that china tour now talking about the china tour if you look at the screen right now you see a phone number a customer care number you can call if you want to be part of the um, china tour there's also a website there that you can go register to be part of the tour that is coming up in a few months so just check it out there or if you are not understanding just send me a message and i will tell you what to do let's try the recipes that i'm doing if you're not following me on instagram please Follow Ajina Foodies and Spice. Try this recipe that we make here all weekend. I'd like you guys to try it. Try it and send me um, your pictures. I'll celebrate you on Instagram, okay? All right, guys, welcome back. You can see how beautiful this looks. Now the vegetable has brought out its own water. I told you it does that a lot. This looks so good. Now, this soup is fit for somebody like Baba Ibeji, a man you love. <laughs> but don't forget to take care of yourself too, okay? This is really lovely. So I can categorically tell you that after tasting this thing, 
pepper fine, salt fine, everything enter, even that I rule, this will done done. Time for me to turn Semo to take chopper. Alright, something very funny just happened right now. So my cameraman is asking, uh-uh, why are you having this small cup of Semo? Like, he's insinuating if they are not eating. Well guys, people are not eating. I already mentioned it that this soup is from Mama Ibeji. I'm only turning this semo because Nami cook, who cook was chop. Eh? And my food, I always go like to say, I chop the food where I cook. Every other person I cook my mind for your house and I'll go chop my mind. <laughs> eh? Alright. So, of course, you guys know I already have 199% when it comes to turning semo. Yeah. My semo always comes out like pounded yam. So let's just pretend this is pounded yam we are using to eat the ekiti soup. Sorry, my cameraman. Not today. Not today. <laughs> now this semovita is ready. Time to serve it. And like I talk, I've not serve them if not because I need to see me chop them. Now, baba ebeji soup. All right, for the holics, this is ready. If you have never tasted Warawa before, if you have somebody who lives in Ondo, Ekiti, and environs, I beg, tell them to send you this leaf. This soup, you actually cannot go wrong with it because of the leaf. It has its own very interesting taste. I use the word interesting. It's interesting to eat. Yeah? I don't know if this... Um, microphone can take the you know, like the way it goes down. <laughs> I don't know if you got it. Like it just makes swallow smooth. Mm, quite smooth. You see this meat here. It's just for picture. I'm taking it back to Baba Ibeju because I ain't get the oracle of the animal. <laughs> like I can manage some snail. Mm, so interesting. Try it. I'll see you next week in another episode of Foodies and Spice Amazing China. And don't forget, if you want to go to China, you remember all the things I told you in the talk talk session. Okay. See you next week.